The Grey Goose, Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. Threatened by the local bigwig, Malcolm Gregory as he was, I instinctively knew that old man Norman would never burn down his own farm. Charlie Austin and I made an examination of the ruins of Norman's farm and discovered a few interesting facts. We also came in contact with Josh, a dumb gypsy, and after a struggle, let him go, following him later to the home of Malcolm Gregory. Through the study window, we saw Gregory ill-treating him. The matter, of course, was the two missing cartridges. Then, as the grey goose, masked, I bearded this unscrupulous specimen, Malcolm Gregory, in his den. That's what I said, Charlie. Bring in your prisoner and the spare cartridge. What the devil is all this? I've told you, Gregory. The spare cartridge which my friend has in his possession, I'll give you, in exchange for the key of your safe. This cartridge can nearly hang you, you know. Uh, Charlie, keep a secure hold on poor old Josh. I got him, sir. It seems you had. All right. Let's have no more argument, Gregory. You use, in ordinary game shooting, what kind of cartridges? Mayor, yellow ban. What in blazes has that to do with all this? Please produce one. I insist. Insist? How can you insist? Gregory, you're an idiot if you can't see that your thrashings, your ill treatment of this unfortunate dumb creature have bred a deadly hate. Rubbish. He's the one man in this part of the world that serves me willingly. Very well, Gregory. Prove that and you win. My friend Charlie and I have shown him a little kindness. You've only shown him cruelty. In his small mind, seeds are sown which bear fruit. Charlie, just say a word or two to your friend, Josh. Right here, Mr. Hex. Uh, hear me, Josh. You've a pull, see? That's the man who thrashed you, see? All right, Josh. Your friends are with you. Now go and let him have it. No, no! Get him off! Get off! Cop, call him off! For heaven's sake! Call him off! Right, old Charlie. Let's get Josh back to normal. All right, Josh. All right, all right, all right. That's plenty. Well, Gregory, what about talking turkey? Or, if you prefer it, grey goose. Don't, don't let that maniac touch me again. He won't. But just say the wrong word, Gregory, and he will. Oh, bloody well see to that. What do you want, for heaven's sake? Just one of your ordinary cartridges. Filled. Not one of those empty ones poor Josh brought from the farm. Then, of course, the key to that safe. Now, hurry. Here you are. A full one. And may it explode in your face. <laughs> Thank you for those kind words, Gregory. Charlie, let Josh have this. Josh, old man. Here. Here, take it. Pass me that brass tray, Gregory. Thanks. Ah, yes. I see it's already powder marked, so this little experiment won't hurt it. Josh. Cartridge. Tray. Here matches. Now watch. Oh, love a duck. He's empty in the charge. The powder out on the tray. That's right. Now quiet. Matches, Josh. Now watch. Yes. You like that, don't you, Josh? You like the little fire. Oh, cool. see him smile. Blimey. What's all this in aid of, Mr. Hicks? Yes, what does this tomfoolery mean? Just this, Gregory. The poor half-wit that attached himself to you is a natural pyromaniac. You found this out early in his life. Then later you showed him that trick. It was you who sent him to Norman's farm with a pocket full of cartridges. I did not! Don't trouble to lie. He, as he'd been taught to do, emptied the powder out of the cartridges, fired the powder, and so Norman's farm was burned down. Norman burned it down himself out of spite because I foreclosed on him. Rubbish! Your trouble was, the job having been done... Josh forgot to bring back the empty cartridges. Your special brand. So you sent him off to get them. Ridiculous. You can't prove any of these statements. Oh, yes, I can. My friend and I abstracted two of the cartridges, and so poor old Josh brought back short measure. I've just given you one. The other is yours in exchange for the real key of your safe. Come on. 
I don't repeat my offer again. Incidentally, we can open your safe any time we like without the key. I've no doubt you're quite an expert. <laughs> you never said a truer word. That's why I didn't accept that other key. All right. The key's in this drawer. You utter fool! So you'd add murder to your list, would you? Charlie, see to Josh. He's okay, Mr. Hex. Uh, just winged a little. Yeah, only a graze. I estimated you too highly, Gregory. I thought you'd have more sense than that. Shoot again if you must. But before you do, let me tell you I've written out a full statement of my findings at Norman's Farm and everything about you. And it's at the hotel waiting for the authorities. If by any chance I don't appear tomorrow, it'll be delivered to the chief constable later in the day. And how do you like that? Oh, nothing but a bandit. The key to the safe, please. Thank you. Charlie, see our friend doesn't shoot again. Uh, with great pleasure, Mr. Hex. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gregory, for the gun. <laughs> yes, but first... <laughs> Blimey, you've been idiot to use it again. <laughs> Three murders on your hands? <laughs> well, well, I never did say... Uh, thank you. Gregory, be wise. We have a complete case of arson against you. We may have more. It's just possible I may be able to make a bargain with you. All right, then. Shut up. I only said it's just possible. Now to open your safe. Good heavens. <laughs> I've had more trouble with a tin of pineapple. Charlie. Uh, yes, Mr. Hex. Just put these notes in your pocket. I think I know where these can do a piece of good. Rotio. But keep your eye on our friends. Insurance. Oh, man alive. No less than four farms burned down in as many years. Don't touch those papers. Don't you dare move. Right. I think I've got everything, Charlie. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. What a clever man you are, Mr. Gregory. I'm sick and tired of burglars. As I'm sick and tired of swindlers. I'm no Quiet swindler. Quiet while I speak. Apart from other farms and properties you obtain mortgages on, we'll deal with Norman's farm. In short, to the hilt. But the premiums paid by the mortgagee, he, Norman in this case, gets a bit behind in his interest on mortgage. You sell him up, you set fire to the premises and collect the insurance. My hat. What a racket. You'll never prove it. Don't be an idiot. With our evidence about the cartridges, the documents I just got from your safe, where do you think you'll get off? Five years for arson, isn't it, Charlie? Oh, no, 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 Mr. Hex. Ten. So where do we go from here? Don't move. Are you willing to talk now, Gregory? Go on. What's your bargain? You will cancel and relinquish your mortgage on Norman's farm. No. Very well. Our evidence about the cartridges and these documents go to the public prosecutor. Supposing I do agree to your terms? I pledge you my word we'll depart and never say another word on the matter. Your word? The word of an own thief and vagabond? Oh, thank you for your summing up of my credentials. Come on, Charlie. We'll move on, I think. No, no, no. Come back. I, I, I was hasty. I, I, I can't allow this. I didn't think you could. You agree to my terms, then? Yes. Yes, all right. I'll sign the cancellation. Good. And I'd also like a check. A check? For two thousand pounds. Two thousand? No more and no less. Make it out to the Norfolk home for waifs and strays. But I can't... Sign, damn you. I've wasted enough time. This one. Right. Now this. And now the check. Thank you. Come, Charlie, we're not wanted here any longer. Oh, Gregory, just one last word. Brian Faversham may shortly be released from prison. What? I'd anticipate a call from him in the not-too-distant future. Brian Faversham? You can't mean that. But I do mean it. So watch your step. Good night. I have these papers safe, and they'll be delivered in the right quarters. Never fear. Come on, Charlie. I feel I'd like some fresh air. What the devil's that? Father and son having an argument, Charlie. What? Yes. Poor old Josh is Gregory's natural son by some wretched gypsy woman. Well, how do you know? The safe, Charlie, the safe. Most revealing, some safes are. Josh has suddenly seen Gregory subdued after all these years of mastery. 
He's waking up now. Listen. <laughs> reckon he's getting a lamp based in Mr. Hex? Yes, I reckon he is, Charlie. I have some most extraordinary news. Oh, is that so? Yes. We had a bulky envelope in the post this morning. Oh, I hate bulky envelopes. They generally spell income tax and whatnot for me. Well, go on. Tell me the worst. But it's not the worst. It's the best. Oh, really? Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? Good. Oh, it's like a fairy tale. Mr. Gregory has decided not to pursue claim for the overdue payments on Norman's farm. What? You don't tell me. I do tell you. And he's already making arrangements with the contractor to rebuild the premises. Wonderful. Isn't it strange how we've all misjudged him all these years? Very strange. <laughs> well, well, here was I, hoping to help you in my very inadequate way. And... It was sweet of you, but now there's no need for any help from anywhere. Oh, a really marvellous state of affairs. And you're happy? <gasps> Deliriously. Good. Dad and I can make a clean start. Oh, it's wonderful. As I said... Oh, I was rather puzzled when I opened the envelope. Puzzled? But, 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 but why? A grey goose feather fell out of it. A grey goose? Well, how very strange. Yes, it was. What do you make of it? Oh, um, I should think Mr. Gregory didn't know he'd been so careless. Well, after all, it's only a feather, isn't it? But I think I'll keep it for luck. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. No? No, send it back to Mr. Gregory. Or, better still, give it to him next time you see him. It'll remind him of something, I think. <laughs> and so Roland Fletcher scores again, and another episode is satisfactorily concluded. But adventure ever beckons to the dauntless, and every challenge is laughingly answered by the Grey Goose. <laughs>